Okay, so I've got my Sato FA60T engine out here, and I've got the Spacewalker fuselage here. And I had already been doing some runs with this engine to uh, try and get it tuned up again, and I ended up actually disassembling it completely a couple days ago and replacing the main bearings uh, at the front, and then this one bearing here that was the only ones that were bad. So I've done about four or five different runs with this thing, so I know it's tuned up and pretty much ready to install on this airplane. So I started thinking about fitment issues and if I was actually going to have to modify the front end at all. And I've also got this cowling here. Now the cowling that came with this kit is incredible. It is a fiberglass cowl that's immaculately painted. So it's kind of unfortunate because I'm getting all kinds of fingerprints and stuff on it, but that's just what's going to have to happen. Now as you saw in the first video, all the way up to right here, about a quarter inch from the front there, is where this top piece comes off. So that tells me that this cowling is probably only designed to go on right to that point. Now, mind you, I have not opened up the manual at all uh, to verify this, so I'm just kind of going by experience here because I've built, you know, numerous ARFs before and many, many, you know, planes from kits and it looks to me like they've got enough meat here or maybe even here to screw in it looks like so I don't know maybe this is going to go on a little bit further I mean it's not going to go on much further than that because it gets tight then so that looks about right so right about there is about as far on as it looks like it goes. So I want to try and uh, put this nose piece back on here, the top cover. Let's see if we can't do a little bit of fitment here. Let's see what's going to be necessary for this engine. <clears throat> so if I slide this all the way on so that it does cover that. See, I can't imagine them designing it so that you have to have to remove the cowl to get in here. So that's what's telling me that this is only designed to go this far so that you can still access your battery and fuel tank and stuff while the cowling is on. So I'm convinced that that's as far on as that's supposed to go. So with that said, and then, I'm looking and I'm figuring, looking at some images online. You know what? I, I don't want to tape that in place. I was trying to figure out exactly where the head should exit the side here for that most scale appearance, and it looks like it was like right about there, so about uh, a third of the way in from the nose back. Well, of course, you also have the drive hub here, so the drive hub is going to have to come to just prior to coming out there so that the spinner doesn't rub. So this is about where it's going to have to be mounted. So with that said, let's see if we can kind of pull that off. Now look, magically, it almost looks like I may not have to mess with this thing at all. It may just be a matter of just straight bolting that on. So what I've done here just prior to turning the camera on is I got some foam pieces here so that I can kind of set this engine up like this and maybe kind of slide this in place like it would be mounted. But I think I need to put a little bit of support under there. So we're just kind of mock this up a little bit. I was standing up a little bit straighter earlier. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. Now, if I kind of lay this, lay it over here, that looks about right to me. Eyeballing it like that. So, with that said, it doesn't look like there's going to need to be any kind of real modifications at all to this. It looks like it's just going to be a matter of bolting this engine 
directly to the firewall and it's wide enough it looks like it's beefy enough I mean obviously I would go inside here and reinforce the inside of this quite heavily and it does look like it's quarter inch plywood if not maybe a little bit more so I think we've got enough meat there and this is a very low vibration engine it doesn't really generate a lot of vibes when it's running it's smooth as hell so I think we might be in really good shape here so the only things that would really be somewhat challenging is um, maybe just positioning the fuel line and of course the throttle connection on this engine is right here so it's almost right on the center line which is okay because it comes out right about where the fuel tank is designed to poke through there but let's take this off one of the things I seldom ever use on these ARFs, and I don't care what brand it is, is the fuel tank because I found from uh, past experience that these fuel tanks that are provided are so cheap and the components are so garbage that they may last a season and a half and that's about it. Other, after that then the rubber stoppers get all eroded and stuff like that. So why even bother using them just by a good name brand like Dubro or Hayes tank? <coughs> and use that initially. Now the only thing I would have to look at here is the thrust line and make sure it looks like they've got a little bit of down thrust already kind of built into that firewall and it looks like the thrust line is going to be right on the money so you know I would <laughs> it's funny the way they've got this design I'm really really surprised here because honestly it almost looks like they designed this ARF for this engine now that I look more closely at it because it just looks like it's just meant to be I mean even if I go up and down just a hair it's not really going to matter that much let's see here I put it like right there and our head's coming out about here it's coming out about yeah so I mean this looks like it's just going to be a perfect perfect marriage for this because it looks like the head would probably be coming out right about there right where the scale location is now the only thing that I was thinking was that I would probably end up using the flex exhaust that comes down and out like that for two reasons um, that's kind of where they've already got this you know, set up for the exhaust to come out and I could always relieve that for more exit cooling air but it would be nice and the only other reason is I've tried, I've put the headers, just the straight headers from this on here. Uh, and because of the way those headers are shaped, they're not really swooped to go back or outward. They almost just kind of go straight down. That would almost kind of, I mean, it would look cool with the stuff, the exhaust smoke puffing out the sides. But it's not really that scale looking at all. And I think I'd probably end up just using the flex exhaust and having it go out here. So... After my initial observation here, there's some blind nuts that are already in here that I would just pop out if they're in the way. Uh, probably yeah, one of them might be in the way. So I would just have to pop those out and put some uh, new blind nuts in. Coat the entire, at least this much, with epoxy to kind of strengthen up those glue joints and then white glue all the rest of this. Now the only thing is obviously this engine is con probably considerably heavier than any two-stroke engine that could be utilized on this so the only other thing that I would do and I see here I can kind of translucent through this yellow or I can kind of see through it a little bit I can tell that they don't have provisions already cut in here for uh, rear servo mounting for the rudder and elevator and I think that's going to be a necessary requirement just to help offset the weight of that engine so that I don't have to add any tail weight which obviously is always the the hope but I would probably it looks like there's enough beef here that I could uh, cut a hole here for the servos it's not going to look pretty because I'm not going to be able to really recess it because I don't want to remove any covering so it would probably just be a rectangular piece that I cut out put another piece of plywood on top of this and just mount the servo right there one on each side for the rudder and elevator and hopefully that plus mounting the battery as far aft as possible in this bay even if that means 
adding a little piece of wood to this area so that the battery is not sitting right on the covering. Uh, and then I think with that arrangement I should be able to get the CG just right. So anyway, that's my initial observations and preliminary, pre, 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 preliminary evaluation of being able to uh, mount this beautiful Sato FA60T engine to this uh, Phoenix Spacewalker and I think it's actually going to work out really really well so uh, stand by for some more videos for actually when I get the knives out and start cutting and drilling and things like that Are you coming down? <laughs>